start sir okay sir good morning dear students welcome back to another live webinar class for the subject of zoology and conducted by telangana residential educational institutions society dear students this is rajkumar pgt in zoology from tsrs jc lingampalli let us start what we have uh, been learning from the last class so we have started the lesson body fluid and its circulation isn't it in the last class so we have been continuing the class lecture 1 and lecture 2 is completed now today we are going to start lecture 3 of this unit okay this is from your intermediate second year zoology okay dear students let us begin and first of all uh, what we are going to learn from today's class let's see uh, body fluids and circulation is a unit that we have that we have started this is the lecture 3 and learning outcomes of the class today we are going to learn about the following concepts called blood clotting okay it is also called as blood coagulation and we learn about lymphatic system so so far we have studied the circulatory system but there is another system also involved in the circulation that is lymphatic system where you will get to know about it in this class lymph nodes okay these are the lymphoid organs which are important okay for the protection of the body we will learn about that as well and the difference between lymph and blood both are the body fluids but there is a significant difference between these two so we will be learning about the difference between these two and uh, finally the disorders of circulatory system there are different diseases and disorders which are related to the heart and uh, blood vessels okay we will be learning about that as well these are the learning outcomes for this class by the end of this class you must be familiar with all these concepts okay dear students let's begin first of all let's learn about what is blood clotting okay it is also called as blood coagulation okay blood clotting whenever we hit with an injury whenever we are injured or any accident happens what happens at first blood oozes out from the body isn't it whenever uh, blood comes out after 3 to 4 minutes what happens automatically blood gets coagulated isn't it and uh, bleeding will stop it is an automatic automatic process uh, initiated by our body isn't it so this is called blood clotting so in scientific terms we call it as hemostasis okay hemo means uh, related to blood and stasis means uh, stop stopping okay na hemostasis nothing but the blood clotting or stoppage of bleeding helps in the stoppage of bleeding when injured okay so whenever we injure uh, with the process of blood coagulation the bleeding gets stopped since we have only 5 liters of blood in the body if we lose the blood in high amounts it will be threat to us because all the functions of the blood will be stopped isn't it blood helps in the carrying of oxygen and carbon dioxide to send out the carbon dioxide it carries the nutrients it carries many other substances like enzymes hormones and many other things so it is a basic thing which is involved in the transportation of all these things so if the blood uh, is lost in from the body so it will be a threat to body because entire organs or your entire organs of the body stops functioning that can lead to the death of a person as well so to stop that there is a biological process called blood clotting okay hemostatic mechanism there are three mechanism basically which happens in the blood clotting first is the vasoconstriction what is mean by vasoconstriction so whenever we are injured or whenever the bleeding take place at that time our vessels gets on contracted okay here vaso means the vessels okay constriction means coming closure okay since the narrowing of the blood vessels uh, the bleeding will be reduced so it is called vaso constriction this is the first process 
Next, the platelet plug formation. So platelets are also called as thromboplastin, thrombocytes, isn't it? Thrombocytes helps in the platelet plug formation initially to stop the bleeding. After this platelet plug formation, there will be a formation of a proper fibrin, okay, proper coagulation. Okay. So these are the two uh, processes which take place initially whenever a person is injured or whenever there is an internal bleeding. The third process is the production of fibrin. Okay. Fibrin is a net-like structure which is formed on the blood, uh, blood cells which stop the bleeding. Okay. The formation of fibrin is an actual region for the blood coagulation. Okay, dear students. See here, there are the anticoagulants. Before learning about anticoagulants, let us see what are the different steps present in the blood coagulation. See. There are two uh, pathways for the blood coagulation. One is the extrinsic pathway and the second one is intrinsic pathway. See on the, on the screen, there is a, a mind map. Okay, so you can see that. I will be explaining that. So the first process is the extrinsic pa uh, pathway. Second is intrinsic pathway. Why these names are given? Extrinsic means uh, something from the outside. It's called extrinsic. Intrinsic means uh, something initiated from inside. So extrinsic pathway is started by the external injury. Suppose if we met with an accident or if there is a, a cut on our, on our body, okay, due to some accidents, then the extrinsic pathway will be initiated. Suppose in some people there will be internal bleeding also. Okay, internally also there will be bleeding from the organs. So to stop that, there will be the pathway called intrinsic pathway. Okay. So first of all, let's see what is extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway, whenever a, whenever a person is injured, whenever the tissue is injured, there will be uh, there will be activation of different factors of the blood clotting. There are different factors in the blood clotting. So these factors uh, finally leads to the formation of thromboplastin. Okay, so there are there are different factors. These factors gets uh, uh, you know initiate and they will they will release the thromboplastin, and thromboplastin leads to the release of thromboprothrombinase, which is also called as thrombin prothrombin activator. Okay, prothrombin activator. Okay, dear students, the extrinsic pathway, in the extrinsic pathway, whenever the person is injured, they produce uh, the thromboplastin and these thromboplastin activate different factors. Due to the activation of different factors, finally, the prothrombin activator is produced. Prothrombin activator is also called as prothrombinase. Okay. This prothrombinase has converts prothrombin into thrombin. Okay, so formation is done in the intrinsic pathway also, but with the different reasons, by different ways. See, suppose if there is an internal bleeding, then blood platelets gets activated. So they make a platelet factor, which is called the platelet thromboplastin. This platelet thromboplastin and uh, give rise to prothrombinase. Prothrombinase. This, what is the function of this prothrombinase? See, prothrombinase helps in the conversion of prothrombin into thrombin. This prothrombin is formed uh, uh, it is made by the vitamin K in the liver. That is why it is said that vitamin K is important for the blood coagulation. Okay. When after the formation of thrombin, thrombin is a uh, is help is helping us uh, to convert the fibrinogen into fibrin. Fibrinogen is insoluble. Sorry, soluble. Whereas fibrin is insoluble. So it converts, thrombin helps in the conversion of fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin. 
fibrin undergoes the polymerization and increase its substance and form fibrin thread okay a thread like structure is formed this thread like structure helps in the trapping of blood vessels uh, platelet factor and plasma to form to form coagulation okay so finally due to the thread like structures produced by the fibrin they make the clot clot is also called thrombin semi solid connective tissue that rapidly stops bleeding and provides the cells necessary wound healing okay so this is what happens in the process hope you you are understanding this let me explain you once again there are two processes extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway is initiated by the injury of the tissue and different factors get activated finally the prothrombinase will be formed in the intrinsic pathway mainly the thrombocytes the thromboplastin gets activated platelets are important in this and uh, they make the prothrombinase prothrombinase converts prothrombin into thrombin thrombin converts fibrinogen into fibrin and fibrin undergoes the polymerization and uh, it forms the thread like structure this thread like structures uh, will be wrapped around the rbc and wherever the injury is taken place and uh, due to the trap of rbcs and the platelet factors uh, the plasma gets clot rbc and plasma all uh, will get clotted or coagulated and finally the blood clotting is formed okay dear students these are the two processes let's see what what are the anticoagulants here on the screen you can see the anticoagulants the name itself says coagulation means clotting coagulants means the substances which helps in the clotting but here we are talking about anticoagulants that means uh, which doesn't allow to blood allow to clot okay anticoagulants doesn't allow the blood to get clot okay there are natural anticoagulants because inside of our body in the blood vessels blood should be in a liquid form it should not become solidified isn't it so for this there is an uh, uh, there is a natural anticoagulant in our body that is called a heparin okay heparin and indirectly warfarin is another substance which helps in the stoppage of uh, clot clotting okay these are called natural anticoagulants which are produced by the body itself okay natural coagulants next uh, the artificial coagulants so there are certain chemicals uh which helps in the uh, stoppage of this uh, coagulation they are edta the citrates of and oxalates of edta what is mean by this edta ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid it is a chemical and citrates and uh, oxalates of edta these chemicals helps in the uh, helps in the stoppage of the coagulation this is these artificial anticoagulants are used uh, when a, in the blood bank blood banks whenever we donate the blood the blood is stored in the blood bank isn't it so when when we are donating the blood it is nothing but blood is coming out of the body still it has to not to be clot so not to to stop the clotting process they add these artificial chemicals for the stoppage okay dear students this is about blood clotting and uh, different anticoagulants hope you understood let's go to the next slide here in the diagram you are able to see two pictures in the first picture there is an injury here you can see there is an injury and blood is coming out and uh, after some time what is formed the clot is formed okay the platelets the white colored structures you are able to see on the uh, screen they are making the platelet plug okay and finally the fibrin is formed fibrin is formed by the uh, biochemical process so if you observe 
the blood clotting under the microscope under the electron microscope you are able to see this kind of structure okay so where you can see blood vessels sorry blood rbc red blood cells are trapped in a net like structure this net like structure is called as fibrin okay fibrin fibrin is also one of the protein okay uh, another diagram here so here there is a damaged blood vessel so this is damaged and uh, the broken blood vessel activates the platelets and platelets makes the plug formation so see here first of all prothrombin converts into the thrombin and thrombin helps for the conversion of fibrinogen soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin and fibrin helps in the clot formation you can see the fibrin strands are making a clot so that is how the bleeding is stopped so the first step damage to red vessel and next formation of platelet plug and uh, finally the development of the clot now let's learn about the lymphatic system what is this lymphatic system the name itself says uh, it is the uh, network of blood vessels network of vessels of the lymph vessels okay it is a network of tubular structures made by lymphatic vessels hence it is called lymphatic system so isn't it blood vascular system you have studied just now now we are studying about the lymphatic system what is mean by the lymph it is also one of the body fluid but the lymph is the interstitial fluid so you must remember this word called interstitial fluid now comes the question what is mean by interstitial fluid the fluid present between the cells of the body is called interstitial fluid here in the diagram you can see beside there is a diagram on the slide here you are able to see different cells and uh, between the cells uh, there is a space so this space is called uh, interstitial space okay this interstitial space is filled with uh, a fluid matrix a fluid that is called as interstitial fluid this interstitial fluid is called lymph okay hope you have understood uh, what is the lymph lymph is also called a tissue fluid okay tissue fluid if there is a fluid inside the cell it is called cytoplasm but if there is a fluid between the two cells it's called lymph next lymph is a colorless fluid containing specialized lymphocytes which are responsible for the immune responses of the body lymph uh, the name given because it contain the lymphocytes lymphocytes are called lymphocytes are a type of wbc cells which are white blood cells isn't it so these lymphocytes helps in the Uh, immune system to fight against foreign uh, pathogens if any bacteria and viruses any other uh, things enter our body any other uh, pathogens they are trapped and killed by these uh, lymphocytes by different ways you will learn about the pathways of uh, protection in the lymph im immune system but uh, now you just remember this that the lymph is a colorless fluid and it contains the wbc called lymphocytes okay they are important for the protection to fight against the different diseases next uh, let's see what is the lymph lymph is equal to it's a formula you see, you can understand by this formula what is lymph blood minus rbc platelets and plasma proteins of high molecular weight okay so if you remove the rbc and platelets and the plasma proteins which are having high molecular weight remaining fluid matrix remaining fluid can be called as a lymph structurally these are similar to veins the lacteals we are here we are talking about the lymphatic vessels they are uh, structurally very similar to the veins 
in the last class we have studied about the veins veins collect the blood from different parts of the body isn't it arteries supply the blood to all parts of the body lymph is also important carrier for nutrients hormones etc and uh, mainly the fats are absorbed through the lymph in the lacteals present in the intestinal belly so when we study about the when we studied about the digestive system we studied one thing that uh, firstly these uh, uh, fats fatty acids gets absorbed and gets into the lymph not in the blood okay so the lymphatic vessels are also called as lacteals let me repeat the blood vessels are different from lymphatic vessels okay blood vessels uh, are having a closed circuit but the lymphatic vessels are not having the closed circuit they have dead ends in the cellular spaces okay hence uh, lymphatic system also called as open type of circulatory system because they are there is no complete circuit okay i will show you in the next slide how it is uh, made actually so the lymph vessels are also called as lacteals remember this and uh, where the lymphatic system starts and uh, what is the function of these vessels okay let's see extra cellular fluid here you can see a small pie chart extra cellular fluid so this extra cellular fluid is absorbed by the lymphatic lacteals and uh, lymphatic lacteals nothing but the vessels of the lymph these vessels uh, get together and form a large duct and this duct is called thoracic duct okay dear students the duct of lymph is called as thoracic duct this thoracic duct uh, finally attaches to the left subclavian vein okay so finally all the extra cellular fluid the this lymph is mixing with the subclavian vein okay that means the in the vein they are again entering into the uh, lymphatic uh, sorry circulatory system and subclavian vein again we all know about it that it at attaches to the heart okay in the right uh, atrium it attaches to the uh, vena cava and vena cava finally uh, join the heart again heart supplies the blood and blood goes to the cellular level and from the cellular level uh, some substances gets uh, out of the blood vessel and uh, mix with the interstitial fluid and from the interstitial fluid these dead ends of the lymphatic lacteals absorb the lymph see here lymph see here in the diagram you are able to see the lymphatic uh, vessels this is an open circulatory system because the green colored vessels that you are able to see on the slide are lacteals they are lymphatic vessels but uh, when you observe the end parts of the lacteals they are dead that means they are they have dead ends they are not completely joined okay they, there is no circuit formation hence it is called the open circulation okay so uh, from the interstitial fluid they absorb the lymph so they absorb the fluid which is called lymph okay and there are certain organs in the lymphatic system they are called uh, lymphoid organs i will explain you the uh, importance of lymphoid organs also first of all let's see what are the different kinds of lymphatic organs on the screen you are able to see you are able to see a diagram on the screen so tonsils and adenoids they are located in the mouth you are able to see and there are lymph nodes lymph nodes are present all over the body next there are lymphatic vessels uh, which are arising from the lymph nodes and there is a thymus okay it is also a lymphoid organ okay and uh, lymph nodes as i said you they are present all over the body and there is a spleen spleen is called uh, graveyard of rbc okay spleen is called graveyard of rbc because after the completion of the life span of the rbcs uh, they get destroyed in the spleen rbcs life span is 120 days 120 days after 120 days they get ruptured they get destroyed and new blood vessels 
blood cells gets formed in the bone marrow here you can see bone marrow is called primary lymphoid organ so bone marrow means uh, the fluid matrix the matrix of the uh, bone the liquid which is present in the bone next uh, appendix is also called as a lymphoid organ pears patches are located here in the intestine they are also the lymphoid organs and lymph nodes are present everywhere and lymphatic these are the different organs of the lymphatic system why they are important all these are important for the protection for protecting us from different germs and pathogens and to provide us the immune system immunity okay here in the diagram dead down you can see uh, the green colored network of tubules and these tubules are nothing but the lacteals this is these are the lymphatic vessels which are connected together and uh, in the lymphatic vessels some uh, somewhere in the middle areas you can find the uh, bulging surfaces isn't it these are all bulging surfaces are called lymph nodes okay lymph nodes we study about lymph nodes in the next uh, slide lymphatic circulation on the slide you can see uh, there is another network of tubules this is these are called lymph so the red colored and blue colored vessels that you are able to see comes under the circulatory system but the green colored vessels that you are able to see comes under the lymphatic circulation they all make up uh, a duct called as what is the duct we have studied just now thoracic duct so they make the thoracic duct and the thoracic duct joins to, to the vena cava and again goes to the heart heart supply the blood and the blood uh, from the capillaries the fluid comes out tissue it's called tissue fluid again tissue fluid is taken by the lymphatic vessels okay uh, by see watching this diagram you might have understood uh, what is meant by a lymphatic system in humans in humans primary lymphatic organs are there and uh, they are red bone marrow and thymus gland just now we have seen two different glands so this is the thymus gland which is the primary lymphoid organ and also the bone marrow is the primary lymphoid organs these thymus and uh, bone marrow both are important for the production of Uh, wbc okay the wbc which are produced by the uh, bone marrow are called as b lymphocytes and uh, thymus produces uh, t lymphocytes okay so both are important for the production and maturation of the lymphocytes here you are able to see the li uh, secondary lymphoid organs these are lymph nodes and the spleen lymph nodes are the sites of destruction of different pathogens okay bacteria and uh, uh, different viruses and other pathogens whatever are there in the tissue fluid they are taken by the lymphatic vessels and uh, goes into the lymph node and lymph node is the site of action in the lymph nodes wbc destruct the different pathogens lymphoid organs helps in the production and maturation of lymphocytes just now i told you the lymph lymphocytes are important for providing us immunity and its function you will learn in detail in the immune system next uh, spleen is also is called the graveyard of rbc just now i told the rbc after the life span destroyed in the spleen let's learn about the lymph nodes lymph nodes uh, they occur at intervals at, in the course of lymphatic vessels here you are able to see the bulging surfaces in the vessels, vessels. they are called uh, lymph lymphatic nodes they are made by lymphoid tissue these lymph nodes contain lymphocytes plasma cells and fixed macrophages macrophages are important for the phagocytosis to trap the bacteria and viruses and pathogens and to kill them the lymph what it do it filter through the lymphatic nodes these lymph whenever lymph is flowing through the lymphatic nodes lymph nodes 
identify the foreign particles identify the toxic substances and the pathogens and they destroy them and they send the, the they filter it from the pathogens and they send the remaining fluid to the heart that's how the filtration take place here the filtration means killing of germs kill uh, kin, removal of the toxic substances the macrophages macrophages remove microorganism cellular debris isn't it and foreign particles from the lymph so that's why it is it is said that lymph nodes are important for the protection of the body next lymphatic nodes can detect and destroy cancer cells also okay so cancer cells uh, carcinogenic agents also get destroyed by this lymphatic nodes what is meant by cancer it is a disease uh, which is where the cells go out of the control cell division goes out of the control and there will be a formation of bunch of cells so the growth of the cells makes the uh, tumors and tumors leads to the uh, the cancer okay so lymphatic nodes can detect the cancer cells also with carcinogenic agents next lymphatic nodes also add lymphocytes and antibodies to the lymph okay let's now see the difference between lymph and blood there is a significant difference between these two uh, we will take character wise uh, we will take case certain characters and we will see whether they are existing in the lymph or not rbcs are present in the blood but absent in the lymph next uh, character is blood platelets they are present in the blood but absent in the lymph wbc they are present generally less number than the lymph but lymph has a uh, more number of lymphocytes white blood cells okay next plasma plasma is present in the blood also in the lymph okay uh, in the equation of lymph we have studied that the blood minus blood cells and high molecular weight proteins is called as lymph that means plasma is present in the lymph also albumin and globulin are present in the blood and also the lymph fibrinogen fibrinogen is more in the blood but less in the lymph fibrinogen helps in the clotting of blood isn't it coagulation property is more in the blood because of the existence of fibrinogen because fibrinogen converts into fibrin and make an egg-like structure and forms the clotting isn't it but in the lymph the fibrin uh, the coagulation property is less next the direction of a flow where do they go uh, it is direction of flow is two way in the uh, blood because arteries are supplying and uh, veins are taking the blood but in the lymph it is not like that only one way circulation is there from tissues to the heart only one way okay only one way from tissues to heart in the diagram we have studied right Uh, we just know in the diagram we have seen only one way circulation is there from the tissue fluids to the heart from heart to uh, tissue fluid again uh, the lymph uh, lymph nothing but the plasma goes through the blood rate of flow the fast fast uh, fastness is high in the blood but it is slow in the lymph glucose urea and carbon dioxide is less in the blood but more in the lymph okay so it is carried more by the lymph now let's see different disorders of the circulatory system disorders means maybe some diseases and some diseases are genetic and some diseases are non genetic let's see what are the different problems of circulatory system first is the blood pressure bp so whenever we visit a hospital first of all what do they do they check our bp whether blood pressure is normal or not normal blood pressure is 120 by it if it is more or less both leads to the uh, disorder okay 
next uh, coronary artery disease it is a main important disease caused to the circulatory system and which can lead to the death what is this it is often referred to as atherosclerosis okay and affects the vessels that supply the blood to the heart muscle it is caused to the due to the deposits of calcium fat and cholesterol fibrous tissues uh, in the vessels yesterday when i taught you uh, the circulation coronary circulation i told you i given you a picture which is related to this coronary artery disease the blood vessels are uh, you know deposited by fat calcium cholesterol and which uh, obstruct the flow of the blood since the flow of the blood is obstructed and the lumen of the vessel is narrowed the pressure of the blood will be increased and uh, if the clot continues the same if the deposits are increasing finally what happens the way the flow of the blood can be stopped so which leads to the stoppage of circulation to the heart if the heart muscles receive less blood they receive less oxygen there will be release of less energy and finally it may lead to the stopping of blood may be called as stopping of working of heart may be called as a uh, heart attack okay to stop this uh, what do they do they uh, they make the artificial uh, you know artificial means of circulation which is called coronary angiogram okay so coronary angioplasty is done for this coronary artery disease and uh, if there is a clot somewhere suppose uh, on the screen you can see there is a, a vessel suppose the clot there is a uh, there is a deposit here so if there is, if the circulation is blocked they will make another way for the passage of the blood like this which is called the bypass surgery that means uh, blood is now flowing with another way okay dear students next uh, angina is also called as an angina pectoris a symptom of acute chest pain appears when not enough oxygen is reaching the heart muscle this is due to the coronary artery disease because uh, whenever the circulation of blood is less automatically the oxygen uh, of availability will also be decreased that's called angina the next is heart failure heart failure what does this mean it means the state of heart when it is not pumping the blood effectively if the heart doesn't pump the blood properly what happens blood is not supplied to the sufficient amounts to the body and all the nutrients hormones and enzymes the oxygen there are all these substances also do, do not reach properly to all the tissue so which may leads to the uh, death of a person it's called heart failure next cardiac arrest which is called heart attack uh, when heart muscle suddenly damaged or it, it if it receives less blood so cardiac arrest take place the stopping of beating next ischemia ischemia is an inadequate flow of blood uh, to a part of the heart caused by obstruction to its blood supply these are all are related to the coronary disease okay so due to the deposits of cholesterol fat and uh, the calcium it leads to the heart attack these are the circulatory circulatory disorders okay dear students let's see the assignment from today's class we have studied different concepts today and uh, regarding that i am giving an assignment describe the process of clotting of blood the next one is name the disorders of circulatory system just now we have studied and what is lymph and how it is different from the blood okay what is lymph and how it is different from the blood what are the lymph nodes and uh, write their function also okay this is the assignment for today hope you have understood the class